What do you do as legal counsel for the Permanent Court of Arbitration? As a legal counsel at the PCA, I'm a part of an ever-growing team of legal counsel, um, a team of lawyers who came from all over the world to The Hague to work in the Peace Palace. Um, um, we mostly uh, work on uh, cases administered by the PCA. We work with the tribunals and the parties and court reporters and everybody involved in an arbitration case. And on a more personal level? But on a more personal level, as a legal counsel, every morning I uh, come to the Peace Palace and I admire the beauty of the building. And um, my office is ac actually right next to the Russian vase room. So every morning I pass by uh, the Russian vase and I think of the Russian uh, Tsar Nicholas II and the first Hague Peace Conference. I know it might sound a little weird, but um, the PC was created at the initiative of uh, Nicholas II. And um, it's a matter of national pride for me to see see the gifts coming from the Russian Federation and, um, and Russia that were given uh, to the Peace Palace years ago. As legal counsel to the Permanent Court of Arbitration, how do you contribute to a more peaceful and just world? I've facilitate um, the conduct of international arbitrations. I uh, serve as a channel of communication between the tribunal and the parties. I provide um, other types of uh, administrative support to the tribunals uh, sitting on um, mostly investment arbitration cases. And one of the uh, most prominent ones was the ABA arbitration that was administered by the BCA in 2009. And um, because of, not necessarily because of the BCA administration, but because of the role of the BCA and the role role of everyone involved in that arbitration and the award issued by the arbitral tribunal in that case actually ended hostility between the South and North Sudan. So this is only one of the deeds that speak in favour of the Peace Palace and the PCA in terms of contributing to peace and justice in the world. So as I was working on this and facilitating um, the appearance of the witnesses before the tribunal, I really felt that I contributed um, to um, the rule of law and to, uh, to international justice in that particular case. So why did you choose this job? I did that because I was looking for this uh, totally new perspective of, uh, on, on, on international arbitration. Um, this, is a, this is a very different experience working as a counsel and working as a secretary to, to an arbitral tribunal. Um, so this was one of the reasons. The second reason was that um, the, the, the Peace Palace is the and the Hague in general is uh, more or less a capital of international law. And I, when I was a, a lawyer working in private practice, I was working on commercial arbitrations. And here at the PCA, I work on state-state arbitrations, on uh, um, arbitrations involving states or state state entities. So this is more um, um, this is a different kind of work. Uh, this involves diplomatic skills, and this is something that that I enjoy doing. So although I had to leave Paris, um, I do not regret it. The Hague is um, the Hague, it, both in terms of uh, per my personal experience and in terms of my professional experience in The Hague. Um, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. Why is The Hague such a good place for arbitration? Well, in the uh, international legal community, especially in international arbitration, The Hague is considered to be a, a neutral venue for international arbitration, given uh, the Dutch Arbitration Act and uh, the applicable um, arbitration laws. When, um, when the parties select The Hague as the seat of the arbitration, they are very aware of, um, of uh, the Dutch laws that would be applied to the, the arbitration process. When you're back in Russia, what do you tell people about The Hague, the Peace Palace and the work that's done here? Um, every time I return to Moscow and I meet with my colleagues and uh, my university mates, they're always very curious about uh, the Peace Palace and about, about The Hague and about the work that I do at the PCA. So there is definitely a great interest in uh, this uh, dispute resolution mechanism coming from Russia, uh, which plays well because, as you know, uh, 2013 is the year of cooperation between Russia and the Netherlands. And um, I. I always speak about, I'm always happy to speak about the Peace Palace. I, I talk about the history of the Peace Palace, about uh, the First Hague Peace Conference, about Nicholas II, and about how beautiful the Peace Palace is. How do you rate the importance of the work that's done here in the Peace Palace? 
A lot of the work that's done here at the Peace Palace is not visible to the outside world. What is really visible is when uh, the parties come to the Peace Palace for, for their hearings in uh, be it international arbitration or the proceedings before uh, the International Court of Justice. So this is when the importance of the Peace Palace as a venue becomes very visible. For example, in the ABA arbitration, you had the uh, tribe leaders here, you had the representatives of the government of Sudan, and it was the first time the parties met to discuss their case and then, uh, did contribute to the peaceful resolution of uh, their dispute and, and did contribute to the end of hostilities in Sudan.